Story Chat with John Fornoff, the art and passion of storytelling. Here's your host, Brian Bullabush. Well, I've got an amazing guest with me. We had him uh, here on a Story Chat uh, last time, and he's back one more time with this, and I hope many times more. It's been <laughs> such, uh, it's, it's just a joy working with you, Phil. I've got Phil Lawler here. Uh, creator with of Adventures in Odyssey, Jungle Jam. He's done a whole bunch of other audio dramas. How many audio, audio dramas have you done? Oh, I, I, I've lost count. I had, <laughs> I, I, at one point, I think I was involved in pretty much everything that was out there. Oh man! Uh, certainly in the Christian, certainly in the Christian community. Um, so yeah, Kids Corner and Paws and Tales and yes. Down it's, Gilead Lane and uh, all. Funny, all I'm, uh, I'm working on a show, and it's like, oh, Phil worked on the show too. It's like I'm falling <laughs> in your wake here. It's, it's kind of fun. I got, I got to ask you this is a personal thing, Phil. How uh, just for fun, if you wouldn't, how many how many episodes have you written? Did you ever- uh, for Odyssey or just I've written? Let's see. For Odyssey, I think it's um, two. 200 and it's like 260 270 episodes something okay. like that that's a so lot it's not as not as many as people think but actually paul mccusker wrote 300 uh-huh. uh of them and then i've written and then I, then there's me and then i think it's it's like marshall and kathy and, and, and you're in there somewhere too yeah. like 60 or 70 that you wrote yeah 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 and um and so so there's that and then there's then there's the the there's jungle jam and there's there's oh. i mean there's just a variety of oh, other that's things wild. i've i've directed all um, I think all 400, I think, of the uh, Odysseys at this point. Yeah, I think it's been four. Wow, that's years. that's that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, Phil, um, we this is it's a treat talking with you because um, you've got your master's in philosophy. Yeah, yeah. And you have uh, well, your master's. Almost, yeah. Almost, okay. I, I quite, quite, I didn't quite finish the master's in philosophy, but it, uh, one one day I'll pick it up and finish it. But. Well, it's, it's kind of fun, just a personal thing. Like, sometimes I think I'm intelligent, and <laughs> they don't hang around you. It's like, okay, that that was a good. Or I'll read um, C.S. Lewis. You know, yeah. the books he was reading at the age of ten and eleven. He's reading, you know, yeah, I know Odyssey. He's reading, you know, Iliad. He's, he's, it's like, oh, come on, you're just showing up at ten. And I know. <laughs> and I crazy. think it's smart. You know, it's like, ah, no, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice no, little, it's, little cut there. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> that's a. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Something about story. I mean, it's what we, you and I do when we, we yeah. are at work, but there, there's something important for everyone out there about how important story is. What it's story is like, it's, it's, we're talking about, you and I were talking about this up in, up in New York at, at Lamplighter. Like, what, why is story so important for us? I mean, some people think, well, it's just entertainment. You know, it's just like, it's just, you know, you, you read it, you watch it, you listen to it. And it's like, okay, it's fun and you just move on. But, yeah. y- y- but it, there's more to it. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, for 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 me, for what I've learned and what I think is a foundational truth of life is the story is everything. It's everything mm. that we are from the moment that God said, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When God created time and space, story started. That's wow. that's what story is. So yeah, um, uh, and and it's a it's a narrative. It's a linear narrative story that goes from here starting to whenever uh, whenever god decides to stop yeah. stop yeah. it and um uh and so i because of that uh, and then and then he he made all of us and and we start at a certain point and we go to a certain point in our lives and that's a story too that's that's a start and a finish and uh, and because of that we, we, you know you you have to realize that we're all we're all these walking talking stories that's wow. that's who we are wow um, we are that's why that's yeah stories what you said yeah yeah story is everything story is story is what we are story is is how we how we how as how we communicate with each other is how we how we understand uh the life how we understand life and how we understand um the things that go on around us um Mm -hmm. we we understand them in terms of story what is it that you do every day you go out you do your job you come home and what's the first thing that when you sit around the dinner table that somebody asks how was your day? Yes. Oh, here's what happened. Yes. You, this thing happened. Well, what are you doing when you do that? You're telling a story. Exactly. You're telling a story. You're, you're saying, yeah. "I'm this thing happened. This thing happened. This thing happened." You're the protagonist of that story. You're the main character of that story. You had a goal. You had a desire that you had to go and try to achieve that day, getting to work or getting this thing, this project done. 
And then what do you, what do you say? Well, this thing happened and then this thing happened. Well, what is that? You're putting up obstacles in the path of achieving your dramatic need. You see the dramatic situation that you're in. All of those, all of that will, will color and temper the choices that you have to make in order to achieve your, your goal. And so uh, uh, for me, I, that was, that was, that was kind of a, a, a world changer, a rocking that kind of yeah. rocked my world. I, I, I didn't think about that until uh, a lot until I was in grad school. And I had a really wonderful professor, Professor Trujillo. He, he, uh, well-known screen uh, script writer and and uh, and director. He's done a lot of lot of work, and and he he really broke those principles down for me. He mm. really he really helped me to 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 take a look at life and say, you know, th no, this is this is this is a this is all a story. This is the way the way we work things out is a story. Now, what we want to do is learn what those elements are in story, so that way we can write other stories for other people yeah we can write those stories for other people wow. and that's that's why you're here why you're here is to learn to learn these foundational things that go on all around us so that way you can we can we can um, write stories for other people and then we can teach other people how to write stories too and how to look at their life as a story i think that that people uh, i think that people should look at their lives as a story and i think that that if they did if they if everybody really started to look at their lives as story that they would have uh, a much more uh, positive outlook about things because the, the nature of stories is that you, you have up and downs, you go through hills and valleys yes. and, and, and there are bad times in stories, really bad times. And this is what we like about stories. The, the, the mm. hero goes through a terrible situation, a terrible crisis. The protagonist is all, uh, you know, is cut off from everything. They hit rock bottom. And then what do they do? They claw their way back up. They claw their, they, th those are the stories that we like. They, li they like, yes. we, we like that kind of thing. Yes. And, and, and that's our lives too. So many young people, especially teenagers, uh, end up in despair. They think I'm never going to get out of the situation that I'm in. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. in this horrible, awful thing. Bad things have happened to me. I'm, I'm in this horrible, awful situation and there's no hope. There's, there's, there's no hope. So I'll just, I'll just end it all. I'll just, and, and that's, that's why I think a lot of, um, a lot of suicides happen. A lot of teen suicides happen. A lot of things, things happen. They're just, they're, they can't get out of it because they can't see that. No, you're, you're not, you're not in a bad situation. You're just in a certain part of the story, which wow. is why I always tell, tell everybody, remember where you are in the story. Remember where you are in the story. You're, you're, you're at a certain point in the story. Remember, remember that. I'd like to speak to those people going through, um, like we all go through this, like a discouragement, despair. We feel yeah. we're stuck. We're just going, going through. You said something to me in New York. <laughs> it was you're quoting your professor. I say lots of things. You, say lots of, you said lots of things, Phil. <laughs> and uh, you talked about Act Two. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same professor. The same okay, professor yeah. I had another professor. Were two professors. Two writing professors that I had. Mm -hmm. And uh, Professor Trujillo was one of them, and then there was another another one, and he was going through a real rough time in his life. This this second professor, and uh, he was he, again another script writing professor, and and um, he was going through a divorce, and it was really bad. His life wasn't going the way he wanted it to, and 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 bad things were going on. And so uh, he was walking down the hall one day, and he ran into Professor Trujillo, and Professor Trujillo said, "What's the matter? You don't look very good." And he goes, "Oh, it's just bad things are going on in my life, and this has happened." And he goes, "Well, come on, let's sit down." So they had a cup of coffee together. They talked about it for a little bit, and uh, he, he, the second professor, told Professor Trujillo everything that was going on and and uh, in his life. And uh, Professor Trujillo thought for a moment. He looked. And he said, "Well, you're you're just in Act Two." You, you're just an act two, don't you see? Oh. And, and he goes, uh, what? And that's kind of rocked his world. Because if you know anything about this three act structure, stories are structured in three acts. Usually that's the way most, most stories are structured. You have your act one, you have your setup, you have your act two, you're in the middle of compl complications and conflicts and all bad, the messy middle is what we call it. And then act three is your resolution. And he said, well, you're, you're just an act two, that's all. Just to, and he said, yeah, later I talked to the other professor and he said, man, he just rocked my world. That, yes. That's You think oh. about that and you go, wow, that's exactly right. I'm just in the middle of act two. What happens next? Oh, this thing happens. That, that, that wow. happens. And that's the nature of stories. That's, that's how we, that's how we function. Um, and so because of that, I think because of that, part of my uh, life now and, and teaching certainly has been dedicated to, um, to getting people to understand the foundational elements of story, what story is. We are walking, talking stories. We better know what what, what a story is comprised of, what that is. Well, tied in with that, um, I'm going to quote Phil Waller quotes to you, okay? See if it, <laughs> <yeah>. okay. 
Well, I'll I'll start one. I'll start one. This this is this one really. I I wrote these down. It's like yeah, just yes, yeah. So uh, I don't want you to get big head or anything, Phil. Just no, I'm just putting no, down please. Phil Phil Lauder quotes. Um, no, just seriously. I mean, things you've said that you've found, you've discovered. It's like when you find a treasure, you want to share it with yeah. somebody, and sure. you have you've discovered some treasure, and you share that with. It's it's the treasure, the the glory of 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 treasure. And when you find it, is sharing with. It. That's part of it is sharing with. That's, that's how that treasure really comes into its own when you share it with somebody. So thank you for sharing. Uh, oh, what, what he, one thing you said was um, about you're either the protagonist of your own story. Can you c- yeah. complete the Phil Lawler quote for me? Can you <laughs> Go well, ahead. I, you're either the protagonist of your own story or you're a minor character in somebody else's story. Wow. And, and uh, 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 you know, you, you can make that choice. That's, that choice is completely up to you. In one sense, being a minor character in somebody else's story is a good thing. Mm-hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> but on the other hand, you might be a villain in somebody else's story. Whoa. What if you're Whoa, the antagonist in somebody else's story? Yeah. Wow. So that's the reason that, again, when you think in terms of, of story elements, you think in terms of all those kinds of things, when you think, well, am I, am I just a villain in somebody else's story? Does somebody else look at me as being the bad guy in their story? Wait, there's a revelation. Wow. That's yeah. yeah. Scary yeah. One there. <laughs> exactly. Because who, who wants to think of themselves that way? Some people would probably really love thinking of themselves as being a villain. Yeah. But 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 really I'm nobody wants to laugh for that one. Yeah, yeah. See, I know nobody wants, but nobody wants to. No. I, I, you know, if if you stop and think about it, you really don't want to think of yourself as being the bad no. guy. No, you, know, you know, you you want to be the hero. Yeah. Um, but but uh, so so and that's, a, that's a, again that's another way of looking at it. And and if you are just the person who comes in, you're a you're what we what we call in writing the writing game a static character you don't really have a background but you float into somebody else's story and help them with their story okay and then you float out again well, that's perfectly fine too that's mm-hmm. great and they're all part of your story as you, you're the protagonist so if you it, you know you 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 want to you want to work with the creator of the universe to write your story yes and, yes and uh and write it in the proper way and and make sure that what you're writing is is uh, is what, what's supposed to be was supposed to be written and how it's supposed to be done. When we were working with, uh, when you were, um, when I was working with you on Odyssey, when you came up with the writer's room and you're taking yeah. things, you're going through story and story thing. You said something, you said, when the, when your audience expects a zig, do a zag. Yeah. And you, when we were talking in New York about this, uh, there's a new, that, that was, that's, I love that. This gives that sense of you, you kind of, you don't know where things are going to go. That, that keeps you interested. You know, if you, if you know how things are going to yeah. turn out, there's, that's not much of a story, but you got those zigs and zags. And you said, really, when you think about it, that's God. Oh yeah. And tell, tell us more about that. How, how's, yeah. how's yeah. God? Well, I mean, think about, zags? think about the, think about, um, think about what the world considers normal versus what Christians, how Christians look at the world. So think of, think of Jesus's teachings. The last shall be first. Mm. Mm. There's a zigzag. Wow. What? Wow. You know, the, the, the least is the greatest. Yes. You know, um, <laughs> uh, the foolish things confound the wise, right? Yeah. The foolish yeah. things confound the wise. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. you know? mm. Well, uh, 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 wait a minute. How, how, how does that even work? How does how does that even supposed to work? What is that supposed to be? How is that supposed to how is that supposed to function? How are we supposed to deal with that? And 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 the idea behind this is that Christianity turned everything upside down. You know, Christ's death on the cross. He, he turned everything upside down. He, mm. he didn't say, I, you know, I, I'm, I make all things new out of, I, 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 he wasn't just talking, you know, this is, yeah. this is, um, this is, this is the profound, see, this is the deeper magic from beyond the dawn of time. This is, this is what that is. That, that's, that's all about sacrifice. Some of the, I was contemplating this uh, one day. I was gave, it gave us a lot of thought one day, and 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 uh, and I thought, wait a minute, you know, the most incredible act of love that has ever been displayed for us is Christ's death on the cross. Mm. That is an act of supreme sacrifice. That is an act of sacrifice that uh, was with 
the all-knowing, all-present, all-powerful, omnipotent, all-knowing all God before the creation of the world, before the foundations of the world. Mm. Which means, which means that sacrifice has to be an essential, essential element of the nature of God. Mm. That has to be a, a core element of God's nature. Sacrifice. Mm. Oh man! Yeah, when you think about that like that, you think, well, what are we doing? What you know? Yeah. If if now God made man in His image, yeah, then He has to have imbued that. In. That's why we find that so compelling. That's, wait, that's wait, why we wait. find that so compelling because before the world began before anything was that was that was mm -hmm. the father the son and the holy the, the trinity the father had to look at the son and the son is i'm willing to sacrifice i'm willing mm -hmm. to let you sacrifice i'm mm -hmm. willing this is this is all part of the, the essential nature of our i love you so much that i am willing to sacrifice to to sacrifice mm -hmm. to take all of this on and sac and, and, sac and sacrifice well, that's 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 pretty that's pretty profound you know that's amazing because without that we have nothing and that's what a you hero does, that we right? have no hope it's yeah. a definition of a hero yeah. you sacrifice yeah. Yeah. These, a bit of yeah. essential parts of our character so yeah. so uh the zigging and zagging is really interesting because uh we have uh, we see god doing that throughout that that's kind of what miracles are too that's what mm -hmm. god intervening in 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 the narrative Mm -hmm. And making things making things happen that we didn't expect to happen. This is what he means when he says, you know, the very least, the very the very least, the things that people cast off, the very least of these things are the most important things, are the biggest things. Um, these are the things that I use. Israel, the children of Israel, the Hebrews were not a great people. They were not a profound people. God didn't choose them because they were the best. He chose them because they were not the best. He chose them because they were pretty wretched, you know. But he said, "You're going to be my people, and I'm and through the world. You will, you know, through through you, the world will be will be blessed. Through you, yeah. the world will will know." And and, and when you start thinking about that, you, we look for that now in, in stories. We look for that in in great stories. Um, one of my favorite parts of the Lord of the Rings is um, is uh, the, in the films. I think this is also in the books, but in the films. Uh, at the very end of the last the last film, uh, the Thanks last the return of the return of the king. Yeah, they're all they're all in gone and uh, in, in, they're all uh, uh, as uh, the king has been crowned. Mm, they're all okay. in Gondor. They're all walking through. Um, uh, uh, Aragorn is with Arwen. They're together. You know, they're walking through, and he's acknowledging everybody as they walk past and they walk through the crowds, and, and the crowds part, and there are the four hobbits. Ah, uh. and the four hobbits bow. And he says, oh, my friends, you bow to no one. Uh, and then they all bow to them. <laughs> and I look at that and say, wait a minute. Uh, what is that? What does that mean? Well, Tolkien is giving us a crystal clear metaphor for what God does right there. He uses the least, the very tiniest, least, right. seemingly most unimportant to change the world, mm. change and save the world. Mm -hmm. you know, he he uses he uses what, what what everybody else would cast aside yes. as his his as his weapons as his power as his as his as his arm as his outreach. Wow, he, he uses all of those. That's what's that's what's so incredible about about God. Yeah, you know that's. That's where he's zigging. That's where he's he's zagging where everybody else zigs. <laughs> Wait. You know, everybody else wants to put their power and the might and of our weapons yes. and our might and our this and our that and blah, 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 blah. we want all that. Those those are the, the 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 warriors, the the big, the most, the strongest, the powerful. Is it? Yeah. No, God chooses the weakest, most insignificant, tiniest yes. thing that everybody else casts off. And that's what god uses that he's constantly surprising one of the things that i really i really was uh, it's another thing i was thinking about the other day was that i i want i, I want to to do research and study in, of scripture so that jesus is endlessly fascinating i want jesus to be endlessly fascinating because he is <laughs> well he is but we we have made him not Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, kind of this, black, nice, you know, pasteurized, and we all see. Yeah, yeah. yeah we and yeah. we all hear about the greatest story ever told, and we all and we know, and we and so we've 
we've got this surface level mm -hmm. of the things that we know and that we're comfortable yeah, yeah. with about Jesus. But but how many how many Christians out there would really say, well, yeah, I find Jesus endlessly fascinating. Oh man. They would say, I find him compassionate, endlessly yeah, compassionate, yeah, yeah. endlessly kind, endlessly this, endlessly forgiving, endlessly this. But how about fascinating? Wow. He is. <laughs> that, he is. He should be. There's a, um, I think it was the founder of Navigators, Dawson Trotter, I think his name. Anyway, he, he was talking, it, sh it should be a crime to make the Bible boring. Yeah. And it ties in with that. It's like, yes, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's just like, it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's, that ties in with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's what we had at the beginning of Adventures in Odyssey. I know that that was one of the things that I really, um, I, I remember very distinctly saying, if we are writing down a mission statement for what this mm -hmm. program needs to be, this is a place of wonder and excitement and adventure yes. and discovery. Yes discovery yes and it's all about the fascinating incredible christian life that we have that we can unpack and we can learn and that and that the more we learn the more there is to learn the more we know the more there is to know yes and how we realize that we we don't know anything we, we may think we know <laughs> so much but we don't know anything and it's endlessly fascinating it's endlessly fascinating. It's this is what Jordan Peterson talks about a lot. I don't even read, read Jordan yeah, Peterson yeah, yeah. or see a lot of Jordan Peterson stuff, but this is what he talks about when he's saying, you know, how how can they how can the church basically have mm -hmm. taken this incredible the uh, most unbelievable message ever and turned it into something that people run away from? I, yes, I, I, he was like, yes. I, yes, yes. You have you have it a problem. <laughs> whole generation of people out there young people who are looking for meaning they're begging for meaning you can yes. see it in their lives they're turning from this to that to this to that to this to that and we have this incredible incredible meaning to give the, the church said this incredible story this incredible thing story. that we can give them <laughs> and and they're like no 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 way and and and, and, it, and it, you know we can't help but think it's just because we have made it into something that's awful Oh, you yeah. know, something boring, something, yeah. something that's <laughs> mundane. And <laughs> you make, cast you, off. As you're talking, as you, you, you just I'm thinking about just talk about the fascination of God. Here is yeah. the supreme ruler of yeah. the universe. I mean, just all power, everything he's got. He's he's ruling. The, he created the universe. He's ruling the universe. And he comes to visit us as a baby. It's like yeah. A god like that becomes a bit. I mean, just think about that. I mean, outside a normal. Not, and not just not just not just a baby. He is, he is a baby in the most obscure part of the most obscure. Yes. You know, he's, he's, he's in a manger. He's in a food <laughs> trough. Yes. He's oh, wrapped yes. in rags in a food yes. trough. He's, what? This is what I mean by, by, yeah. by the zagging where everybody else thinks. If we were looking for a savior, we certainly wouldn't look there. We'd look for something amazing to happen. We'd, yeah. we, we would look for what's going to happen the second time he comes. Where he comes in the clouds with glory and with power and with yes. and, boom, yeah. and this is it. Boom. That's what we would look at. That's what we were looking for the first time. That's what everyone was looking for the first time. But God said, No, no, I, I gotta I, I don't know. This is this is something different. <laughs> and the reason and there's a reason for it. Why? Well, we have to you have to get to the story. That's the point. Oh. You gotta get into the story. You have to dig deeper. You have to understand why all of that happened. That happened all for a reason. It it's not it's <laughs> It's not just oh that this is God. I try to I try to describe wit this way too. Um, wit is never random. Wit doesn't do random things. Uh -huh. Okay, um, uh, Shelby Foot in the in the Civil War, Ken Burns Civil War series. Shelby Foot was just wonderful. Um, He's he's just just great, and one of the things that he talks about when he talked about Abraham Lincoln, they asked him about Abraham Lincoln, and he said he said the curious thing about Lincoln for him was that um, he had this ability to step side step outside of himself and look at himself as though he was looking at himself. He said it's a very very strange strange quality that Lincoln had about this. He had this ability to kind of yeah yeah step outside of himself and look at himself and see the whole bigger picture of of things that were going on. And he said, uh, he said, it's a very, very strange thing, but he said, it's a very highly intelligent thing. And he said, that's a very simple thing to say, but we forget, we, we hear so many stories about Lincoln's compassion that we forget what a highly, highly intelligent man he was. And he said, in almost everything he did, almost everything he did 
was calculated for effect. Mm. Wanted to 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 get an effect out of it. Almost everything he did. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? That's it. That's if somebody asked me about wit, that's what I would say about John Avery Whitaker. He doesn't do random things. Everything that he does is calculated to be a teachable moment. I love that. It's a, it's a teachable moment. That's what he's trying to do all the time. Every from the smallest little thing that happens at the counter, the soda fountain counter, at yeah, yeah. To, to big things that are going on yeah. outside and on all. And he's and he's constantly looking for ways to make this a teachable moment. How is this a teachable? Yes. Moment? Yes. How can we make this? How can I? How can I get you to understand a profound? And you know what the profound nature of what God puts into the world, whether it's mm -hmm. ethical or whether it's more, whether it's metaphysical, whether whatever it is, mm -hmm. how can I do that? How can I turn this thing into a teachable moment? And and uh, and 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 that's that that to me is is what I mean by endlessly fascinating. That's what Jesus does. Yes, a yes. Teachable moment. Yeah. Everything, yeah. everything is a teachable moment. It's all about telling us, I'm I have all this stuff. Oh, there's all this great stuff <laughs> that I can show you. Come along with me. I'm, I'm, I've called you to a life yes. of adventure. You're, you've, I've, been, I've called you to a, all those guys that I called to be fishers of men. That's yeah. what I'm doing to you. Come along with me to this life of adventure. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. It's an. I'm not going to say it's safe. I'm no, not going to make it safe. Adventure is the going to be tame. The valley shadow, right? Yeah. It's a, it's an adventure and it's, yes. it's going to be dangerous, but man, is it worth it? Come. I've got a wonderful friend, Tanya, and she talks, this is uh, her theory. And I love this theory. I'm uh, talking about the fascination part yeah. is like in heaven, they are eternally worshiping God. Yeah. And, uh, and her point of view is that's because they just found out something new to worship him about. Yeah. And, so, and it goes on forever. <laughs> That's it. See, just right there, that that thing right there. Uh, I don't know about you. When I was a kid, I thought, well, eternity just worshiping? Me too. I thought, oh no, that's me. It's just like, that yeah. Like, are, are we going to get kind of bored after a yes, while? Yes, no, exactly. Just, that's a great, great way of looking at it. That's a really wonderful yes. way of looking at it. Do we honestly think that the that the eternal God, the creator of all that there is, and that we only know right now a tiny, tiny fraction of all there is to know, mm -hmm. That we're gonna get bored. <laughs> we're gonna get bored with him. <laughs> what, yeah, how, what arrogance! What, I, what arrogance! You know, I the same, part. This is, you know? up, I, I felt the same way, and now it's the revelation. Like, oh wait, he's the one who invented the universe. He probably has some yeah. really cool stuff for us to do up there. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, cool anyway. I don't, I don't think that we've run out. Of, I think I don't think we're ever gonna run out of things to do. <laughs> yeah. Talk so. About, um, flaws uh in it's, it's important for a character to have flaws and it's interesting yeah. that's what i love about the bible it's the bible it's just like it shows the warts i love that it, it makes yeah. it relatable and uh, i gotta ask you about this phil this is this uh, is in the early days of odyssey one of the things i really enjoyed about wit is that wit made mistakes sometimes yeah. and it's yeah. like the, it's like, and he just like, oh, whoops! It's like, here's this guy I'm looking up to, and he he has some flaws. It's like, you know what? I like, I can relate to him. And now, I let me just throw this out here, just my observation, and correct me, okay? Just kind of slap me, hit me, or whatever you got to do, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at with late, like in the like as he morphed. There's this unwritten rule is that, well, we can't have Wit do that because he's an example. He's a role model. And if he makes a mistake, we'll, we'll lead all these millions of ch children astray. It's like, can you address that a little bit for me? Because he started uh, off like, but then he kind yeah. of worked a little bit. Now he could be getting back to his flaw. Could, well, me. I think I think there's there's a whole story arc going on right now that people think is Wit's making a huge mistake in how he's handling stuff. So. Mm -hmm. All that, all that is, I won't, I won't go into that because that's a, that's a, that's a weird situation. But, um, mm -hmm. but I think that, um, see, I think that there's a, there are degrees of things. Okay. So it's not that wit can't make mistakes, but it's the nature of the mistakes that he makes. First of all, that it, you know, everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And he would know that um, it, he wouldn't do, uh, he wouldn't do. Um, again, if he does, if he does, it's, it's a mistake that is designed to be a teachable moment. 
Oh, okay, it's, what you're saying earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a, it's not that, it's not that he doesn't fall short of the glory of God. Of course he does. Everyone, everyone does. Everyone sins and, and, and falls short of the glory of God. But there are, there are, uh, he doesn't do, um, <laughs> how, do, how do I put this? He doesn't do the mundane mistakes. You know, you, you know, you know, you know, yes. talking about, he, yeah. he doesn't well, the whole do thing with the imagination things. station that, that, uh, what, what, the, the one where he, he, yeah, yeah, goes back to Jenny and his imagination. That was a whole, right, right, yeah. right. So, so Tom is calling him out on that because you shouldn't be messing around with this stuff. And he's saying his whole thing was, well, maybe it's a mistake. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this, but maybe not. You know, there, there's, there's ways of looking at this that are not necessarily uh, anti. You know, Tom is a Tom is an archetype. There, he's an archetype that's more that's providing warnings that the hero shouldn't be going to this right point. Yeah. Okay, so it's a grander story that we're talking about, and um, and so he's and so Witt is saying, but there's there's still a curiosity that that goes along with this. And I don't think I'm breaking any rules here by doing it. Now, it might not be the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not the best thing to do. Okay. We would know that we're doing evil. We would know that we're doing good. That's not where we need to look. It's, it's not about good versus evil. It's about better versus best. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. There you go. It's about yeah. good versus yeah. better versus best. Yeah. That's where we fall down. So it is entirely possible to make a good choice and that be the wrong one. Wow. It's not the it's best. Not the best. It's not the best. Oh, yeah. I man, I'll, I can tell you a story, yeah. but we're not going to do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> speaking see, of that's that's yes. that, that that's that's where we need clarity of thought. That's where we need critical thinking. Yes. That's where and people people run from that and they shouldn't be running from that. They should yeah. be turning and embracing and trying to look at that and say, okay, you know what? Yeah, this is how we need to come. This is how we need to look at life. This is how we need to look at society. This is how we need to look at, at all sorts of different kinds of things because uh Saul thought that he was making a good choice. Oh yeah. I am going to take all these animals and I'm going to sacrifice them. <laughs> yes. I'm going to take I'm going to I'm going to take the uh, you know, yep. a, a gag and we'll yep. we're going to save him for a for yep. a really bad thing. And Samuel comes in and says, "Why didn't you do what I told you to do? Why didn't you do what God told me to tell you to do? How come you didn't do that?" Well, because I was making this choice, which is a good choice, right? It's yeah. a good choice. Oh, yeah. It's okay, I can look at that and say, yeah, that's a good choice. But you know what the best choice was? Obey. Yes. Yeah. Obey. Yeah. That that's, that that's was the, the best. best choice. That's the best. So you made a good choice, and it's it's the wrong one. It's the you wrong made a one. Good yeah. choice, but it's the wrong one. So and and the this is this is again zigging and zagging. Yeah. This is again all of these things that turns everything on its ear. It turns everything upside down because we like to think that we can make those good choices. We we know I I'm making a good choice. This is a good choice. I'm in a good play. I'm good. This is good. This is mm. good. Oh well, no, it isn't. <laughs> Oh, it is the best choice. That's so good. That's so good. Man, I don't want to live a good life. I want to live the best. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's exactly. Great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I got it. I'm, I, I've got to ask you before you go. This is, just, this is, this is, I just can't wait to ask you this question. I don't want to build it up. <laughs> okay. I get the sense of drama. I don't know what that is, but um, I would love to know what, what makes from your point of view and your experience and all that, what makes great story? What what is it? What's what's the secret sauce? If you could, if like you take oh, it down, wow. you get down to you know, what what <laughs> is it that makes great uh, story? What is well, it? first of all, first of all, I don't think that there is a secret sauce. This is this is this is the disappointment that um, going through a course of study in uh -huh. story, in story, creative writing, and story. This is the this is the disappointment that a lot of people feel mm -hmm. when they go through this. Uh, when they go through this, because you teach you teach these things. Uh, this is what being a teacher has taught me. You teach you teach stuff. You know, this, here, here are the foundational elements of story. This is what makes a story a, a story. Mm -hmm. And then, um, okay, so that's that's writing 101. Right. And then you go to writing 202. I'm a sophomore now. So I, I took that. It was a prerequisite course, and I'm going to go. Up and, and you get there, and you sit down, and, you think, and then you realize he's teaching me the same thing that he taught me in writing 101. Ah. Yeah, 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 I am. You know why? Because that's... That's the same stuff. I'm just teaching you more of it. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. okay. So okay. I taught you about plot and I taught you about character and I taught you about dialogue. I taught you about those things and I taught you this is that this is how we look at them at a foundation right. level. Now I'm taking the same things and I'm going to teach you on a di different level. And that that is going to it's going to seem like it's a lot of repetition, but that's that's what we have. That's what we do. And then you get to writing 303. Now you're a junior and you realize, oh, it's the same stuff. It's just more of it. It's just more, more. Okay. and then okay. then you get to your capstone your senior project and, you, and you're being taught and you have a mentor and your mentor is telling you no nope, that's exactly we're going back we're going back to this all the time it's all um, yeah. and 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 you see writing um writing is uh is an art form much like ballet dancing is an art form and classic you know concert pianist is an art form and painting is an art form. And what do concert pianists do in the green room prior to playing their concerts? Well, they're practicing, right? They're just going through the drills. They's're going through the and, and what are those? Scales? What is, what is yeah. the first thing you learn when you learn to play the you piano? You're doing your scales. I mean, you're right. That, that's where you start. Oh my that's goodness. exactly it. That's exactly. And so you have a concert pianist, world class concert pianist who's playing difficult, extremely difficult, complex, concertos and, and piano pieces and and what is he doing in the green room dun, 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 dun. Wow. the thing that he did when he first sat down or she first sat down on a piano with a piano teacher and and they said here's a middle c play a scale yes yes that's what they're doing uh vocalists same thing in the green room what are we doing we're warming up why we're doing scales we're not singing the songs that we're singing out there when we're going to be out there doing the musical. We're warming up by doing scales. Hmm. That's what we're doing. We're going back to the very foundational elements of our art. What is a ballerina doing in the green room? She's doing plie, she's doing releve, she's doing this. She's doing those basic, you know, step this point, this point, that, do that, do this, do that. That's the basic, the, basic. The, 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 the foundational elements of their craft their, their art their craft yes. well writers are the only ones who think i don't have to do that anymore i learned that <laughs> i've already learned that i've already I, I, learned, I don't have to do that anymore i don't have to i no, i've learned that I, yeah i learned that i learned that in writing 101 i don't have to learn uh -huh. that anymore i don't have to do that really 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 i i knew a man who was a, a he had two doctorate degrees he was a he, he had a doctorate degree in piano performance and he had a doctorate degree in pedagogy piano pedagogy and yeah. he would teach choir we, i was in a part of a singing group and he was in a choir and he would come in and people would complain you know why do we have to do this and we're doing that same piece over again and he goes because i don't understand you guys I, I really don't understand he goes i have two doctorate degrees and i have to practice mm. Mm. what makes you think that you don't have to practice <laughs> what makes you think that you just know this mm. no, no 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 and and, and so and so what we need to do then as writers is learn to love that. Mm. Okay. That's what we need to learn to do is to learn to, to love that. That's part, that's the process. Love that stuff. Love going back to the foundational elements. Love yes. that. Love them. Go back to them all the time. Go back to them all the time. Practice them again. Practice them again. Learn, refresh, refresh, refresh. Oh yeah, that's what a plot is. Oh yeah, plot is beginning, middle. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what I need to. I oh yeah, character has these elements to it. Dialogue has this stuff in it. This is this is what you do until it becomes second nature. And it's then fundamental even after, it's, yeah, even yeah. after it's second nature, yeah, you yeah. go back and you do it again. You keep going back to it. You keep going. See, we're the only art form that we think I've already done that. I don't I, no Now, now tell me more. Tell me, tell me, tell, tell me this thing. Tell me that thing. And I think, you know, I, I tell my students, I said, there's no ma magic pill. I don't have a Harry water, a Harry Potter wand here. I don't have the magic sauce that you're looking for. I'm not keeping anything from you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? I've, I've taught you this and I'm not keeping anything from you. It's not like there's a special handshake that we have to go. <laughs> and if you learn to do that, then you come into the real club where we're real writers. Uh -huh. No, no, no. I'm not doing that at all. I'm not keeping anything from this is what it is. There's no secret this sauce. It. It's just the sauce. There's no secret sauce. <laughs> There's just lots of doing it over and over and over and over and over again. And and then when you're so tired of it, I, I don't know, I don't remember who it was, it was a professional golfer who said the first thing I wanted when I decided to be a golfer, professional golfers, I went out and got a bucket of balls and I hit a bucket of balls. And there were, you know, 200 balls in that bucket. When I finished with that one, I got another bucket of balls. And I hit another two. 
And then I did that again. And I did that again. And I did that again. And and my hands were bleeding. My wow. hands were bleeding. Wow. And when my hands were bleeding and I thought, I cannot control this. I can't even grab this club. I got another bucket of balls and I hit another <laughs> bucket of balls. That's what it means. That's what it takes. And why? So I can learn. If I just turn the club this way, if yes. I turn the club this way, if I turn the club this way, this yes. way, I'm going to go this way. Different things happen. Different things, yes. different things happen. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. okay. So yeah. the things that I used to call stupid rider tricks, <laughs> I used to call things stupid rider tricks. You know, if you do this little thing, you just, no, that I, I really, I really, I repent of saying that because that's not it at all. That's the nuance. That's what you're doing. That's mm-hmm. when you're going back and you're doing this over again 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 and over and over and over and over and over. That's what you're learning. You're learning the little nuance. You're learning this. Oh, I can do this, this little clever turn of thing. If I do this and I do this, oh, that's how that works. I can get this kind of a reaction. I can get this kind of a thing. Oh, oh, that's how it works. That That's what's going on. Okay. And then the next story is going to be different. There's going to be something different. It's going to be, I have to bring in a whole new uh, way of approaching this this the the these same elements. This, How many notes elements, are yeah. there? How many notes are there in a musical scale? There are twelve notes, mm-hmm. and with twelve notes, there always have been twelve notes, always will be twelve notes. Yeah, you can get a fine taste if you want to say. Well, I know there are people who argue that, but they're basically twelve notes. Twelve notes in a musical scale, yeah. and with those twelve notes, every song, every concerto, every symphony, everything that's ever been written in history has been twelve notes. 12 yes. notes. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is what we call repeatable variation. Ooh. Repeatable variation. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Keep going. Okay. I'm this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, know. I know. This is, this is all about really, me. Really... Who cares about it? Listen, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm, okay. I'm adapting this from, from a lecture I heard about yeah. science, about science and the creation of the cosmos and all this other stuff right. and about science and religion, how they, how they brought it together. Mm-hmm. And this was a phrase that was used in this lecture about when you see the cosmos, when you see how things work, when you see how the earth works, when you see the creation and things, how we're created, you realize this repeatable variation. It is, wow. you see repetition, you see patterns, we see patterns in the world all the time, but it's also variation. It's variation. Oh. It's the same thing. This is what I mean by God bringing together two things that don't seem to go together. Repetition and variation would not seem to go together. And yet we see it everywhere everywhere throughout creation we see repeatable very endless variation repetitive repeating endless variation repeating 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 and that's exactly what we have with story we have in repetitive variation endless variation on stories that's what we see with music endless variation of repetitive notes repetitive thing repeated 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 it's repetitive repeatable variation wow it, yeah it's a mind-blowing concept this is this is this is again one of those things that you go wow holy moly that this is the endless fascination of jesus this is exactly what we're talking about yes one of these things that comes out all of a sudden you realize oh my goodness yeah that applies all over the place it's not just to science and scientific creation and all that it also applies to art and applies to what we do how yeah. do we do it how do we do this we we have the same three-act structure it's the basic three-act structure. All, we can mess around with it, but it's still all basically comes back to the basic three-act structure. Set up, complications, resolution. How do we deal with that? What do we do? All the great stories have been told that way. All the, the mm-hmm. stories that we love and we know and throughout history, all of them have been told that way. Repeatable variation. Wow. So, and so, so you have to learn to love that. Yes. Our, yes. our problem is, our problem is that we're always thinking that there's something new like that. There's always this, you know, we have this idea that there's something, yeah. somebody's hiding something. Yeah. Somebody's, so, you know, God is, well, it's all still the same thing. We have to learn to love that process. Going back to, to Aristotle. That. Aristotle, oh, way, way, way back. He's doing the three yeah. X. It's like, it's, yeah. it's, still go, it's still three X. It's, going back, going back, yeah. going back, going back. And, 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 wow. And, and, and this is why I say when I'm when I'm looking at at, at at notes or I'm looking at analyzing scripts or I'm looking at when people mm-hmm. ask me to, to look at stuff, if you understand the foundational elements of story, if you understand how all that works, 98% of the problems of your story, if you don't like what's going on, you'll find it there. 
it's not that two percent of uh, uh, Heidi flighty you know spe yeah. spectacle stuff it's not that that's not going to be your problem the problem is always going to be you haven't got a good plot you haven't got a good character yeah. this yeah. this character doesn't have flaws this character doesn't it's not this character's not doing this this character's not doing this, this dialogue doesn't fit the character this dialogue is not it's not speakable <laughs> you know it, it's this dialogue it sounds you know you can you can see those kinds of things and those are that's that's what i call that's what i call marching toward the the aesthetic the objective aesthetic the yes. objective aesthetic um yes. and, and that's that's what i look at i look at, at i, I want to look at art from the standpoint of of an objective aesthetic now people are saying well you can't do that because art is not objective and i say yeah yeah there is there is for for christians there is an objective aesthetic and that's god mm. that's that's truth goodness and beauty truth goodness and beauty um, that's what that's what art really is that's what art encompasses that's that's what true art is um like whatever you want like whatever you want it has nothing to do with what you like or dislike it has nothing to do with that like whatever you want i said what i told my students i told my students this is like whatever you want but understand that your job as an artist and your job as a christian especially is to bring your likes in alignment with the objective aesthetic with god that should be what we what we want to do you can like all sorts of stuff but just understand that what you're liking out there may not be what's in alignment with with the objective aesthetic. Truth, you, goodness, beauty. Truth, goodness, beauty. Truth, and goodness. truth, goodness, beauty, of course, is what? Jesus is the truth. There you go. Yep, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Goodness. Well, who is goodness? It's God. That's Jesus God said, when the rich young ruler came, yeah. and he said, good master. Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? There's no one good but God. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so now we've got goodness and we've got truth. And what is the Holy Spirit? The beauty. Beauty. Oh, that's we so need beautiful. all of them. We need all of them in our projects. All of them. It's not mm -hmm. enough to put one or two things into them. This is a problem with, quite frankly, with some of the Christian movies that we see, movies that are made by Christians. They'll have lots of truth, lots of goodness, maybe not a whole lot of beauty. Mm. Or lots of truth and lots of beauty, but maybe not a whole lot of goodness. Mm. because those are different those are different things that 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 we bring to each of our each of our projects okay we want truth we want the word the word which is the logos which is the which is truth we want goodness goodness uh we want the goodness of the father which is creation and being and plot in and of itself and we want the beauty which is the spectacle and the song and the and the and that's that's the, going back to aristotle that's the presentation. That's the presentation. That's how we have to do it. And we want excellence in all of those. We want we want to look at all of those and how do we align ourselves with that? Wow. Oh, man. This is, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. Phil, thank you. You've, you've poured into this show and you just poured into us. And I just, I want to speak for all of us listening. You know, all the people are going to be tuning into this and just listening and, and watching. Just thank you. Uh, you're welcome but you. uh, again it's not me it's the holy spirit it's god it's the glory glory be to god um you know i i think that's part of what we're we're supposed to be doing too i'm not a i'm not a person who says oh god spoke to me and told me to tell you this but i do think that that god does i mean the heavens declare the glory of god yes. his glory is all around us and and from a scriptural standpoint all we got to do is look at it the way he wants us to look at it we'll see it We'll, we'll see it if, if we if we do that and and in doing that then we it, it it's incumbent upon us it's 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 the apostle paul said woe be unto me if i don't preach it's the same kind of thing for us here same kind of thing for for artists we have to be able to tell other people about this and show other people the way and tell teach them how to how to how to how, what you've been what you've been taught but it, but but don't think it's you it's not me it's a, i'm just i'm a vessel you know, yes I, yeah just, yeah that's good that's good try don't i don't i don't that's not me it's yeah. it's, it's 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 god it's good uh to wrap up wrap up here um we've got let's say uh, we're talking to writers out there these are people who want to learn about storytelling mm -hmm. to, to wrap up here um let's say they're going through a tough point in their in their story maybe their personal story or in their story they're writing and it's just like man it's just like i'm having i just 
it's like, am I really meant to do that? I'm just, they're discouraged. Okay. Sure, sure. Um, and just going through a tough time in, in their story in their, with their writing or whatever, they're, they're frustrated or whatever. Tell us, can you give us some encouragement as, as a writer? And maybe well, as, yeah, I've already said it. Remember where you are in the story. There we go. You're in a story, writing a story. You're in a story. Remember where right. you are in the story. That won't last. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Don't don't think that this is where you are. I think I, I saw a clip of Tom Hanks talking with it. There was a big actor circle, big, big name actors, and they were all sitting around a table and having a round table discussion. And this clip is pulled from this discussion. And Tom Hanks says this. He said, if I had one thing that I could go back and tell my younger self, I'm coming from a perspective of a guy who's in his mid-60s, and I'm going to go back to, to the beginning, and I'm going to tell, the, tell young Tom Hanks one thing. It will be, this too shall pass. Yes. This too yeah. shall pass. You're in a bad place. You're in an awful, awful, terrible situation. You, you think mm -hmm. you got no hope. This too shall pass. Wow, that's you're, in a really, you're in a really good place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the flip side. <laughs> things are really, really wonderful, and you're making lots of money, yeah. and everything is going really well. This too shall pass. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And that, that I, I look at that and say, yeah, he's absolutely right. I think that's 100% that's yeah. right on. Remember where you are in the story. Remember where you are in the story. Because this... This too shall pass. You keep move. You, you're you're always moving. The stories. You don't step in the same river twice. That's good. Okay. And there's a, there's an author behind all of this. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> awesome. <laughs> That's awesome, Phil. Thank you for being on the show. This you're is very great. welcome. Yes, a great great joy. Thank you, man. Love, love love being here. Thank you for having me. Remember the young wit books. Oh yes, wit books. yes, young wit books. Get the them. Books. Yeah, get them. <laughs> the the last two, four and five are out now they'll be out well i don't know when this is airing but it'll be out uh, august 8th and mm -hmm. you can get them at the focus on the family website you can get them all, everywhere just just get them get them get them get them oh yeah great stuff great stuff bill thank you man blessings thank you all right thank you for joining us for this episode of story chat if you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions for John or feedback on the show, please email us at storychatwithjohn at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.